things are rolling along here. We're super excited, lots of snow coming down. Alternative Impact sent us these awesome A-arms. 36 inch wide ski stance, very nice and narrow. We wanna play in the snow, wanna be able to boondock, wanna be able to carve really tight, have fun side hilling. 36 inch stance, pretty much the smallest or the narrowest stance you can get. So of course we had to go with it. These are Crow Molly. He also makes these out of titanium. And I'm telling you, the craftsmanship is unbelievable. I've purchased arms from them before, have them on my rev, and I'm liking them. They're very strong, but they do one thing for you that you're gonna appreciate. Even though they're so strong, they'll actually buckle before the front of your sled wheel, which is an important thing. If these are stronger than your front bulkhead or your nun, that's not a good thing. Things are gonna really start to bend. So these will sort of give away, and that's what you want to happen. Now for normal applications on your factory sled, the kit will come with everything you're gonna to need to install it. But since we're doing this custom job here on this 800 IQR, things are a little different. We sort of needed to make up a couple of shims on either side. Look at that, you can hear my son rolling through. That's old school right there, 1971 Alain. But since we're changing things up a little bit, we had to make our own shims. They're gonna go in here. Pretty easy thing to do. I'm gonna show you exactly what I did. Now one of the first things you're gonna to have to do is you're gonna to have to take this little heim joint and you're gonna to have to shorten this up. If you thread this all the way through, it's gonna come up through here and it's gonna come in contact with your spring on your shock. You can't have that. So we've gotta go, gotta take 5 eighths of an inch off this right now. Now, everybody at home, <laughs> this is a working man's bench, all right? There's a lot of things going on in the shop here and don't blame me for this mess. I know we like to keep things a little cleaner, but uh, we don't want to turn the camera this way because we have a few things going on. We don't want everybody to see it. But anyway, I'll get to this in the spring. So I've marked off my 5 8 I've just used a couple of plastic old washers that I had, and it's sort of got that bolt gripped right in place. Beautiful. So I've shortened up my bolt. Ooh, that's a little bit too much on there. Sometimes I get a little crazy with this stuff. But it's been a long day. You know how it is. Daddy. Hey, bud. What's up? Yeah, good. Put some on, wipe it off. And we just thread this into the arm. And this was something that we ran into. Uh, we found that when we went to Elka, you're going to see this video coming up very shortly. You won't want to miss that, actually. It's pretty fun. Went to Elka Suspension. We custom made the shocks for this sled. And we did run into an issue with the spring coming in contact with this uh, little joint here. So that fixed that. I'm going to leave this loose. I'm not going to tighten up that jam nut until everything is sort of set into place. It's nice and loose. When you're done, when this is cut, that bolt shouldn't extend through there. Now, he doesn't make a specific arm for the IQR. Nobody really does that's a 36-inch stance. So this is off a Dragon, I believe. And we had to make little spacers for it, which are right here. These are made out of a... UMHW kind of stuff for plastic, if I got the UHMW. Sometimes it's UMHW or UWHM, I forget. But anyway, uh, we had to make our own. And these bushings are actually out of an IQR, but we had to machine them down slightly to fit in there. And once we've done that, everything fits in. That's how we kind of roll here sometimes. We gotta make things fit. If we have to, we can adjust the, the rake on the spindle a little bit. We could make a smaller washer if we had to. Shim it. We could shim it one way or the other. We'll know once we're riding it. You have to remember to bring these bolts through this side. There you go. If you don't go through the middle, you 
can't put them on this way through the plastic, I believe. top. Any machine shop can machine these down. We only had to take about, geez, I don't know, a millimeter off these for them to fit into place. JL did it in a couple of minutes. Very easy to do. I tell you, it's tricky when you're putting things together. We didn't start out with a whole IQR. It sort of came in pieces and when you have to buy nuts and bolts one at a time for a project like this, things get pricey. But it's still working and you know what? It's gonna be an amazing machine. There we go. It's nice and tight. I'm just gonna put that in loosely. I know this one. Now with these arms, you're going to save a lot of weight over your stock arms. Number one, you're going shorter. And number two, you're using a stronger material that's actually lighter. It's chromoly. You don't need to go as thick a sidewall with this kind of material. Uh, it, you could be losing anywhere from three to seven pounds, depending on the type of front end you have on your sled. Now we went with chromoly. The titanium is pretty darn expensive. Yes, I'll be saving another you know, one, two, three pounds, but honestly, we're getting great savings with this and they're gonna perform very well for us. Maybe next time in the future, we'll go with the titanium, but for now, chromoly will do the trick. Some things you just have to do by hand. Now it's time to install this factory spindle. And all these little spacers that you need come with this kit. You see them right there. And it's still loose, as you can see, because we want it that way. But you want to do your bottom arm first. Because then that way you can get your upper bolt in. You could come in through the bottom and hook up this bolt, but you wouldn't want to do that because if something comes loose, then it's going to want to fall right out. And that's not what you want. Now this one I'm not going to fasten right up tight either. I want everything kind of nice and loose. I want to make sure I have a good movement through there. I've already attached the other side. I went through it. It's a custom job, so if I tried to do it on cam, we'd be cutting and starting and stopping all the time, which I always have to do anyway, but uh, it'd be much more frequently. So this way I've already done that side, so I know what I'm doing on this one. Time to install this upper one. We machined this little spacer here. It gives us a little extra room for our shock to come through. We did this at Elka as well. You'll see that in the video. We had a great time there. Everybody at Elka was amazing. You're going to be able to adjust your camber a little later on, but you need to put the sled on the ground. Ours is on the table. I don't really know where everything's going to set up right now, but I'm going to more or less tighten it into place but I'm sure in the future, I'm gonna to have to adjust this. There we go. This is my up 
damper. Now when I hook all my steering components up to this in another video, I'm still waiting on some parts to arrive. We'll have to come back in here and check our steering to make sure we have enough clearance all the way around. If not, we might have to do a little bit of grinding on the back side of the spindle. Here we go. This is all grade eight hardware or better. Just tighten up these jam nuts. And it's a good idea to come through here and, you know, after your first run or two with your sled, just come and check all of these connections, make sure that everything hasn't come loose on you. There we go. Now I just need to make sure that we've got 5 eighths clearance on the back of this arm here. So we need to have 5 eighths clearance at the back according to the instructions and that'll give us our proper clearance. And that's our movement. The movement's not going to seem like there's as much because the arms are shorter. And you're going to have to use a custom shock in this application. You're not going to have as much travel on the shock, but that's okay because the arms are short. That looks pretty darn cool. All right, these things look awesome. Can't wait to try these out. Very narrow stance. A lot more fun when you're playing in the powder and side hilling. There's no doubt about it. It's going to be super light up front, very strong. And they look pretty darn good on there as well. I've got to thank Dan at Alternative Impact for working with us on this project again. He's a great guy. I have these same arms on my Rev and they work great. Check out his website. You're going to see that he has probably the trailing arms or the A arms for your application. He's got a very wide range. And after we did our ZX chassis build, he even started making trailing arms again. So we're pretty happy with that. Very high quality product, make sure you give him a call. I gotta thank you guys for coming back. Make sure you come back again because we're gonna be installing some cool Elka Stage 5 shocks, some CNA Pro skis with Woody's carbides, and everything else is coming together. This motor should be arriving this week. Can't wait to get that in. Thanks for watching. Get a possum.